Mikey, thanks so much for today. I had a great time. It was all thanks to you. It's no big deal. It's just a visit. You're my wife, Sarah. It's the least I can do. That's so sweet. I still appreciate it. And I'm also really sorry. I didn't mean for anything like this to happen. You were in an accident. That's why it's called an accident. It's not like you wanted this. And you just ended up breaking your foot. Thankfully, that's all that happened. I was a bit worried when I got the call from the hospital. I never thought a car would pull into the crosswalk like that. I didn't know what to do. I was totally freaking out. I don't think it's that simple of a situation, though. Anyway, I'm sorry, too. Why would you ever feel the need to apologize to me? You didn't do anything that deserves an apology. You were on your way home from cooking lessons when you were in your accident. If I'd been able to give you a ride, we could have avoided this. Then nothing like this would have happened. But you had work you had to do. You didn't want any of this to happen. It's nothing to worry about, Mikey. Lately, I've been so busy with work. Haven't I been putting you off lately? I feel so bad thinking it could have been my fault. Like I said, don't worry so much about it. It's really my fault. I wasn't paying much attention when I was crossing the street. Don't blame yourself, Sarah. It really was the fault of the driver. Any way you look at it, it was their fault. By there, you mean the driver? Of course I'm talking about the other driver. Who else? It was nice of them to take the time to stick around so long and have called the cops and ambulance, but... It sounded like all they were doing was trying to make excuses about whose fault it was. I was getting heated and almost lost it. I thought I'd go off on them. What do you mean they were trying to make excuses? They apologized and even went so far as to give me some money for the inconvenience. They were trying to blame the car in front of them. Well, yeah. They blamed the car in front of them suddenly slamming on their brakes. It's not like they were making excuses about the stoplights changing color or anything like that. They swerved out of the way and there I was, in the crosswalk. I guess it's safe to say that the both of us are just unlucky. I think you're being a little too soft about this. Don't give them the benefit of the doubt. You didn't actually see the car that slammed on their brakes. Well, they took off right after the accident, so I wasn't able to. I wasn't really paying attention to any of the cars. Other than the driver, there weren't any other witnesses, right? I guess they were the only person around. Their story sounds bogus to me. It sounds like they were just trying to shift the blame onto somebody else. What the heck were they thinking? Running over somebody like that. Come on, don't say it like that. They did apologize and went out of their way to give me a little bit of money. They didn't have to do that. Honestly, I'm not worried about it at all. Whether you're worried about it or not is irrelevant. The fact of the matter is that you got hit by a car and got severely injured. There's no way I can forgive them that easily for something so serious. I'm flattered that you're being so protective of me. But it's not like they were purposely trying to get into an accident or hurt me or anyone else for that matter. They made amends for what they did and I just want to put it behind us. Let's put this to rest. It's great of you to be so forgiving, but I won't be. Something doesn't sit right with me. I'm still pissed at them for causing the accident and for hurting you. Okay, okay, I get it. Let's just end this conversation. Other than that, is there anything else going on with you now? I know me not being there makes it harder with all the chores and cooking you have to do now. How did I end up with such a thoughtful wife, Sarah? I've been keeping things together for the most part. There are a few things here and there that I can't get around to, but I've been doing the best I can. I see. Well, that's good. Oh, if there is anything you need help with, feel free to reach out to my mother. You know she's willing to help out with anything. My folks live so close. They'll be happy to help out if you reach out to them. I know. I'm doing good by myself now. If something does come up, I will make sure to reach out to them. Go and get some rest. You need to get better as soon as possible. 
I'll come and visit you again very soon. Okay. Thank you so much for being so thoughtful. I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon. I'm so sorry to bother you at work. Do you have a minute to talk now? Come on. If you know I'm busy working, why are you trying to call me at the office? I'm on my break right now. Can you make it quick? What's going on with you? I just found out when I'll be discharged from the hospital. I just wanted to let you know. Are you in the middle of something? Am I bothering you? No, no, it's okay. You're not bothering me. It's just that I can't be bothered here while I am focusing on work. Gosh, I'm sorry then. But you haven't even been visiting me all that much lately, you know? I haven't been able to talk to you at all since I've been here. Did I do something wrong? No, I've just been super busy at work. You know how it is. What about your discharge date? When is that going to be? It's going to be Sunday of next week. Would it be alright to ask you to come pick me up? Oh, wait. No, I won't be able to do that. I'm supposed to be meeting with an important client from work that day. Can't you just ask your mother to come pick you up instead? Really? On a Sunday? Isn't that one of your days off? You've always had weekends off in the past. I have an important client to meet with. They're only available to meet on Sunday. What don't you understand about that? Um, okay. Sorry, then. But I really wanted you to pick me up. Come on. You're just getting out of the hospital. Does it matter who comes to pick you up? I guess not, but it would make me feel so much better seeing you when I finally get to leave here. Let's change the subject. Guess who came to visit me in the hospital? I don't know. Tom Cruise? Don't be so sarcastic. The person that hit me came and visited me here at the hospital. I still had so many questions, so I asked them to explain their version of what happened. And apparently, even before they ran into me, that one car that brake-checked them was driving all crazy, like they had road rage. They came up from behind driving dangerously, swerving all over the place, and that scared the driver who ran into me. The driver even let that crazy car pass them, and look what happened after that. Okay. And so, what's your point? What the heck does that have to do with anything now? Well, no, it doesn't really. I'm just a little frightened at all of those crazy drivers out there. You never know what'll happen. My mother isn't all that good of a driver, too. If someone harassed her on the road, I think she would be pretty scared, too. It would spook her. That's exactly why I wanted you to pick me up. I already went through this with you. I'm way too busy to pick you up on Sunday. If you're that worried, why don't you call a cab? They'll drop you off right at the front door. I guess so. Sorry for being so weird. Maybe I'll just ask my mom after all. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's go with that. Is that all you wanted to talk about? I'm exhausted and want to take a nap while I'm on my break. Yeah, I'm okay now. Hope you enjoy the rest of your work day. Mikey, I'm finally out of the hospital. Is it alright if I ask you something? Already? That was quick. What do you want to ask me now? When I got home, there was someone I've never seen living in our house. What the hell is going on? Oh, right. I've decided that we need to get divorced. I already moved all of my stuff. I have all your stuff with me for now. I'll send it all over to your folks' place later on. What about the house? Did you break the lease? Yes, I did. I just want to make sure that we are clear on what's going on. I've already decided on this divorce, so you better not refuse to sign the papers. We need to get this finalized. Are you for real? Thank you so much for letting me know finally! Where are the papers? I'll sign them immediately and get these filed. Are you serious? What are you all happy about? Maybe you got a concussion from your accident? 
Thank God my head is just fine. I'm seeing clearly now. Aren't you the one that started with this divorce thing in the first place? It's not even that big a deal. I'm not sure why you're freaking out about it now. Shouldn't you be glad that I'm not acting all weird or frantic about this whole situation? Well, yeah, but still. It's just weird that you're acting all normal. Like this is no big deal. You should be taking this a lot harder. We were married, you know. Nope. You just ended up saving me some time. If this was inevitable, better now than never. Normally, I would have thought this whole process would take a lot longer, but it seems pretty straightforward. I actually appreciate you for taking the initiative. What? Are you actually serious now? You wanted to get a divorce. Only after a while being holed up at the hospital. It gave me a lot of time to think about us. I wasn't planning on everything happening so quickly, though. Either way, we both know where we were headed. This was just a shortcut to the inevitable. What's with you right now? You sound like some sore loser who's trying to hide how you really feel. Are you just trying to brush this off because I was the one who decided that I wanted to divorce you and not the other way around? Well, no, that's definitely not it. But you can think whatever you want. Then why'd you say you were thinking about getting divorced? Why don't you just tell me? What have you got to hide? What could it possibly be? Could it be that I'm over this marriage because perhaps you were cheating on me? What? What are you talking about? Cheating? Where would you come up with something like that? You didn't even bother to come visit me at the hospital at all over the past couple weeks. And even when I tried to call you, you acted all abrupt, as if I was just bothering you. I figured you were probably just cheating on me, so I did a little digging around. What the heck? So you think you figured it out, do ya? At least I don't have anything else to hide at this point. Oh well, it's no big deal. We'll just get divorced and maybe I'll just pay you a little alimony. Wow, how considerate of you. You're such a nice person. Once we get divorced, what will you do with yourself? Unlike you, I already have someone else lined up, as you've so astutely deduced. My girlfriend and I have plans. We're going to move in together soon. She's way hotter than you'll ever be. Sorry, not sorry, but it's true. Ah, oh, well, I don't really care at this point. What you say has zero effect on me now. I hope you're able to find some happiness. You definitely need it. You think I need your blessing? I don't need any permission from you. I'll be sending over the divorce papers to your folks' home. Make sure to look out for them. I need you to sign them right away and get them back to me right away. You better be prepared and not have any issues with any of this. Nope. Everything sounds just fine to me. I want to discuss this alimony with you further, so we'll need to meet up again. Are you serious? I don't have time for any of that. I'll only need a little bit of your time. Unless we work out these details, we won't be able to finalize the divorce. We need to figure out how to divide our assets. Fine. If you put it that way, I'll stop by at some point. Once we figure this all out, you better file the papers. Roger that! Mikey, I just filed our divorce papers. About the alimony, I'm okay with what we discussed the other day. That's fine. I'm still a bit shocked by all this. About what? You just took this whole thing like a champ, Sarah. You know, I just figured you'd forgive me for being unfaithful and that maybe we'd work it out and stay together after all. I completely underestimated you. You shouldn't have expected any less. You know me better than that. I didn't agree to this divorce just because you cheated, you know. There's more to it than meets the eye. What do you mean, not just because I wasn't faithful? What are you talking about? Well, I heard from a little birdie that someone is about to take you to court. You're gonna be sued. Doesn't it make the most sense to divorce someone who's not only a cheater, but on top of that is getting sued for everything he's got? 
What are you talking about? Getting sued? What is this nonsense that's spewing out of your mouth? You think you're going to sue me? You have nothing on me. I really think you should go back and get brain scans. You haven't been the same after your accident. Nope. I'm not the one who's gonna sue you. I wouldn't even give you the time of day. Then who the heck is going to sue me? Tell me what the heck you're talking about. The person who hit me with their car. They told me a little secret. What the heck are you talking about? You must be crazy. You better start making some sense before I block your number. You need to stop playing games with me. What makes you think anyone has any right to sue me? Well, the person who hit me... They only hit me because someone brake-checked them and they had to swerve out of the way. The person driving that car in front... The person driving all crazy. I know who that is. It was you, wasn't it? What the heck are you talking about? You have no idea what you are talking about. You are making zero sense. No one would believe this. You can't be saying that you saw that first car. There's no way in hell. What makes you think you can go around making these false accusations? Trying to hurt innocent people. You're right. I never saw that car at all. I wasn't paying attention to any of the cars after all. But the passenger of the crazy driver, they saw the whole thing. And she was kind enough to tell me all about it. You know, your precious mistress. You are absolutely insane with this made-up story. She came to visit me in the hospital, crying her eyes out. She had a lot to say about you. She was afraid of what you'd do to her and was scared to death about saying anything. She told me all the juicy details about your affair, too. How cute you two must have been. You are full of crap. This is all made up. No one would believe this. There's no way she knew where your hospital was. She doesn't even know who you are. She said she looked it up on your phone. Maybe you should choose a longer passcode. She knew from the very beginning that it was me that was hit by that car. You pretended like you had no idea. What a disgusting thing to do. Your mistress. Wasn't her name Michelle? She seems like a nice girl. Other than when being with you. She said she tried to make you stop, but you just kept on driving and ran from the scene. Ran from the scene? What a joke. You better stop spreading lies about people. I have nothing to do with any accidents. How dare you accuse me of such a thing? There's no way that I could have known you were in that area. Sure, you sound so sincere. Weren't you driving your company car at that time? What if I was? What difference would that make? When Michelle and I were discussing what happened, she told me that you had a dash cam in the car. Seems like one of its main features is audio recording, too. That's pretty convenient. Wouldn't we know for sure if we checked the recording? How can we go about getting a copy of that? Should we call your company? Know for sure. Know what for sure. You better stop all of this nonsense. Michelle, begging you to stop the car. And you just taking off, even after you knew your aggressive driving caused an accident. You telling her to shut up and threatening her. Maybe that conversation will shed some light on some things. Michelle took all that evidence and met up with the other driver to show them what happened. She even said she'd provide testimony in court if it came to that. Like I said, what a nice girl! What? What the heck are you saying? Why would she say that? Why the heck would you take her side? You think this is going to be that easy? Well, she totally regretted the whole affair and apologized about the accident. I could tell that she was very genuine about that. She's sincerely guilty about the whole thing. Coming forth after the fact doesn't change what happened, but at least she's being honest. But Michelle is a million times a better person than you'll ever be. Just wait a second. Let's take a step back here and go over some facts. It's not like I ran over someone or hit anything with my car, you know. There's a big difference here. Don't you think this is all just a waste of time? 
Why would you be trying to do all this now? Don't you think that dash cam recording will prove that you were at fault? With your road rage and aggressive driving? I think they'll find that you were the negligible party in all of this. Considering everything that's at stake here, I think it's worth it all just to prove that. Who the hell do you think you are? You think you can get away with this? You know darn well that we're talking about my company car and what'll happen to me. If they find out, I'll for sure be fired. Don't you care about my livelihood? Don't you think that cheating while you're on the clock is bad enough? And your livelihood? Don't bother going there. Michelle said that she's okay with whatever consequences come her way. She's ready to take responsibility for her part. Maybe you can learn a thing or two from her. Even with her missteps, she has a good head on her shoulders. You think someone like her and I are on the same level? Losing my job for some stupid crap. Yeah, right. I'm too important for that. You better do something about all this. Come on. You should know that I can't do anything about it at this point. The ball isn't in my court anymore. I'm not the one that came forward and gathered all this evidence. How are you going to sidestep all responsibility here? You're the one that started all this. I only got the ball rolling by introducing Michelle and the other driver. Nothing more. Whatever they decide to do together is up to them. My hands are tied. There you go, making up excuses like you always do. Whatever ends up happening, aren't I the actual victim here? You're in the wrong. It's obvious that I have zero blame for this. You better be taking all of the blame and responsibility here. Cheating on me, the accident I was in, everything is entirely your fault and you know it. After that, our divorce papers were filed and the divorce finalized. Immediately afterwards, Mikey was sued in civil court. Michelle followed through and was on the plaintiff's side, providing her side of the story. Michelle's eyewitness testimony sitting in the passenger seat, plus evidence from the dash cam was provided. Evidence of Mikey's road rage was on display and it was determined that Mikey was largely responsible and liable for the accident. In addition to the alimony he had to pay me, Mikey also had to pay damages for the accident. His work found out about this whole mess, resulting in Mikey's resignation. And Michelle's adultery also being found out, she resigned from work as well. When it comes down to it, from the adultery to the accident, I can't say that Mikey was the only party in the wrong here. The person who ran over me was at fault, and Michelle was wrong as well. However, from trying to hide his infidelity to completely lying and refusing to take responsibility for anything, Mikey is absolutely the worst. If Michelle hadn't have come forward and told me the truth, there would have been no way of punishing Mikey, the person who deserved it the most. I absolutely respect and thank Michelle for choosing to come forward with the truth.